Welcome back to the channel. Crypto Walkers joins the Futureverse, the Genesis Mint for Mintage, the launch of Gamified, plus a whole bunch more. This is Into the Futureverse, and today is Friday, the 25th of November of 2022. Now give that like button a bunnies up, and let's get into it. Okay fam, let's dive into it. There's been a bunch of different ecosystem partner updates over the last week, so plenty of content to explore. Team at Mintage are gearing up towards the launch of their Genesis Mint and have updated their website with a lot more details. Their Mintage Pass Day 1 is a founding membership pass for the community. Mintage gives its pass holders opportunities to interface with fashion, history, cultural touchstones and rare collectibles that may otherwise be impossible for most people to own, wear or experience. This pass grants priority access to our designer collection drops and the future mintage market. Become a day one member and secure your spot. Now it was revealed in a recent Twitter space that we can expect the launch to ramp up in the second week of December, tentatively around the 14th. Not all of the details are fully out yet, but we know owning a pass will give priority access to mint future collection drops, from best in class designers, artists and Web3 visionaries, entry to the token gated Discord community, free airdrops and first access to the mintage market, featuring rare collectibles picked from Sean Wotherspoon. The mintage market will feature iconic physical mintage for you to wear in real life. So here's your chance to own a sampling of some in real life curated garments handpicked by Sean himself. It sounds as though certain rare one of one pieces will also be available as digital collectibles to use in our metaverse implementations of our avatars. My name is Sean Wotherspoon. Mintage to us is really meta vintage. You know, it's really bringing the personality, the characteristics, the unique and original wear of vintage items to the metaverse. I'm really excited to kick off Mintage as the first collection because I kind of want to set that bar through the last 15 plus years of me collecting, you know, and archiving and curating vintage. I've always kept a very private collection that really not a lot of people have seen. And I've always kind of held them for a moment that I didn't know existed yet. That's Mintage for me. These are pieces of art and we want to preserve them in time, but we also want to bring them to the digital space as a digital wearable. We all have a unique personality and it's important that we're able to represent that in the metaverse. So it's exciting for me to offer you the opportunity to own one of these as well and be a part of like not only my story, but the story of that garment. I made sure that I've never seen another one, but I also, it was items that I wanted to know more about. What does the world look like inside of that denim jacket? Again, it speaks to this whole holistic view of sustainability where it's not just about the materials, but it's about how people are accessing those. This defines sustainability. We want you to have the same personality that you do in your world, in your digital world. That's what Mintage is. Co-founder Nikki Ads, who's also an advisor to Snoop Dogg, and Sean are 3D scanned, with photographs from over 300 cameras shooting them simultaneously to create a full 3D model. I suspect that these one-of-one one vintage collectible clothings will also go through the same process to allow them to be worn in the metaverse. And looking at the website, we've got further details about the rest of the team surrounding the product. And it has been confirmed that yes, this is a non-fungible labs collaboration, with them being listed as the development team. In their recent Twitter space, they were visited by Asad J. Malik, the founder of Jadu, main man behind the Jadu AR app, and also Bobby Hundreds, the founder of the Atom Bomb Squad NFT collection. Bobby is also a member of the Dow Jones Collective. Dow Jones is a decentralized investment collective and has several friends of the Fluffle associated, including many prominent musicians such as Steve Ioki, Bondish, who is also an advisor to Mintage, Boys Noise, Dylan Francis, and RAC. Lord Tyler, the founder of Barnbridge and Universe, is also there, and also Gio Constantino, who is also the co-founder of Six. Six helped to broker the sale of the Wu Tang Clan single copy album, which was infamously held by Martin Screlly. And on the Six website, Fluff World, among other prominent music artists are listed as partners, including none other than Eminem. Could we see an Eminem party pack drop as part of the Party Bears collection? That would raise a few eyebrows. Interestingly, the Dow Jones Collective are investors in the Altered State Machine and Immersive, which both form part of the Futureverse. And Michelle from Immersive interviewed the co-founder of Dow Jones, Evan McMullen, about her other project, Disco.xyz. Now in a previous episode, I mentioned Intuition, a decentralized identity protocol, and talked about how it could relate to the decentralized identity built within the framework of the root network. 
Diving into the future of S white paper, we can see there is a module around decentralized identity in the form of a software development kit, making it easy for developers to leverage this property of the Futureverse. This will hold important information for digital content applications with service links for resolving digital assets, which will be hosted by the issuers and therefore they will also be the controllers of the decentralized identities. If I was to put two and two together, there's a good chance that Zudo X Intuition could be integrated directly into the root network. At least that's my intuition. It sounds like disco.xyz could also integrate into this. Let's take a sneak peek of some of the highlights of the interview. We've got a, a lot of uh, a lot of excitement happening in the metaverse, but I'm really, really stoked to be here with you today. You're a co-founder of so many companies, so disco.xyz, um, Dow Jones as well. So you must be pretty close with, with Geo. Yes, he is a wonderful friend. I know that you're a part of consensus with um, Joseph Lubin, but you've got a plethora of experience. First fell in love with the decentralized future um, a little over 10 years ago when I was an undergrad. My career has wound through a variety of different roles from content development to hardware development and experience design. I had the opportunity to work on developing the Ethereum ecosystem with the team at consensus. You know, how can we make Web3 more accessible to everyone? How can we build something that it invites the power of public key cryptography to become accessible to all, where you don't have to fund a wallet to get started. And so at Disco, we are really excited about building your ability to own and control the data that describes you. We're called Disco because we believe that you are the multifaceted center of the party and you should reflect your data and your identity to the world however you decide. So if you can imagine a Google form fill, where instead of Google owning all of that data that auto populates every time that, that you see a new onboarding form, um, you own that data and you're able to bring it to more than just Google enabled browser experiences, but rather any application, any physical space, any service, any chat channel. Your ability to show up in any digital or physical environment and receive a personalized experience based on the parts of yourself that you choose to share. Everyone's honestly so excited. We've got everyone from like, you know, um, Fluff World, you've probably heard of that entire ecosystem. Oh, of so course. Oh my gosh, Aaron yeah. McDonald is just an absolute genius and, and their ecosystem really understands identity in I think a nuanced and joyful way um, that is really unique. Yeah, it's a fun um, umbrella brand. So now it's obviously transitioned into Futureverse. So you've got, you know, ASM, um, Immersive is involved in that um, as well. So we've just got, yeah, just such a powerful, um, you know, collab of all the Australians and Kiwis put together. Before I continue, if you are new to the channel, hi, welcome. I'm Jerry, host of Into the Futureverse where I cover alpha and updates on all things Fluff World and the Futureverse ecosystem. And if you enjoy this content, consider supporting the channel by smashing that like button, hitting subscribe, and hitting the notifications bell so you get all my videos in a timely fashion. Next up, we had the launch of Gamified, a new Web3 show focused around the data and analytics for predicting the World Cup matches. Cynthia Freeland has joined the Futureverse in this endeavor. Cynthia was a former Goldman Sachs data analyst who moved into the sporting space, becoming the go-to person for data-driven analysis around the NFL. Getting her to join is a bit of a coup for the team, and it sounds like she'll be sticking around beyond the World Cup. World Cup fans, what's up? I'm Cynthia Freeland, and I'm partnering with the FIFA World Cup AI League to help you show the world your predicting skills for this year's World Cup matches. Alter State Machine is bringing you FIFA's official metaverse football or soccer game, depending on where you live. But before that launches, we're gonna play the prediction game where you can climb the leaderboard and compete against your friends and me. I'll be here along the way with context-based analytics and statistical notes to help you make your prediction decisions. Belgium's ability to play with their typical pace and possess the ball drive the win. And the most likely score there is three to one. So I, I worked on these big financial deals and then meeting with a competition committee, which is a really important part of the NFL's business model. Um, old coaches, old players, it's really fun and they're really passionate about it. And it made me pretty passionate about it. And I kind of discovered that I was really good at like figuring out how a player could impact a game and how teams could be more playoff eligible longer if there was a better quality of play. It kind of led me down an analytics path. I added, ended up getting a master's of predictive analytics. I did a whole bunch of different sports models throughout my my time adding that and kind of just started building out these like the, be the beginnings of a model. And then I taught myself how to code. I started to really get into computer vision, which 
was awesome. It really allowed me to measure things that other, because I didn't trust other people's measurements. I didn't know what, you know, someone's quote unquote grade for something was. I didn't know how it was derived. You know, I, I started to create these models and then, uh, you know, I took a path through Disney and like larger scale, big tech deals. I was more on the tech side for a while, tech acquisitions, purchasing, big scale, Disney strat planning style stuff. And then went to ESPN and then Paul DePodesta, the guy from Moneyball fame gets hired by the Cleveland Browns. I think this first one is a really classic movie that describes me probably best. No surprise here, Moneyball is the movie that I probably watched too many times. I think Moneyball probably is the number one movie in terms of how people can relate to what I do for a career, how I've made my career. You know, you're watching these people who had a much smaller budget be able to achieve such great success, and romanticizing something that you love about a game and then making it even more interesting and dynamic through a different method of thinking about it. That was what really gets me about football. So this Moneyball for football application that literally is my career really is romanticized and told in such a really, really beautiful way with this movie. There is an epidemic failure within the game to understand what is really happening. Okay, people who run ball clubs, they think in terms of buying players. Your goal shouldn't be to buy players. Your goal should be to buy wins. And in order to buy wins, you need to buy runs. ESPN doesn't know how to talk about Moneyball for football on TV. And then, you know, I randomly got a chance to, to, to do that. And that was kind of the beginning of my TV part of my career. Before I continue, if you are new to the channel, hi, welcome, I'm Jerry, host of Into the Futureverse, where I cover alpha and updates on all things Fluff World and the Futureverse ecosystem. And if you enjoy this content, consider supporting the channel by smashing that like button, hitting subscribe, and hitting the notifications bell so you get all my videos in a timely fashion. Last week's show covered the Crypto Walkers and how their upcoming mints of their female collection relates to the Futureverse. And since then, a lot more information has come to light, including their incredible trailer of real-time game footage. Check this out. It also came to light shortly after the trailer that both Jadu, Altered State Machine, and the Futureverse participated in a seed round investment. Now, as Aaron McDonald has repeatedly said, most investments form a co-ventureship, meaning each party takes on a stake of the other in a true symbiotic relationship. This alignment of incentives allows for the best chance possible of success as each party becomes codependent. So in essence, Walker World is a co-owner, the Altered State Machine, and the Futureverse, and vice versa. The trailer is incredible and features Seekers, the Super Heroine Squadron, and even Jeff McDonald's Bored Ape, and it's become clear that many Futureverse assets will entitle you to a spot on the Mint, not just Seekers as first thought. And on top of that, some of the female Crypto Walkers will hold Fluff World and Futureverse related traits, which will result in bonus NFTs from those collections. Potentially, if you are lucky enough to score a Fluff trait, you may even score a free Fluff. How cool would that be? A few members of the Walker World core team jumped onto the Arcade to Earn YouTube channel to explain everything that's being built. And it was very interesting to see that one of the core members has some connections to the Weta Workshop. Keep in mind that the Weta Workshop's Genesis collection are weapons. Coincidence? I think not. That trailer is fucking unbelievable. Holy crap. I mean, today we're gonna to talk to a couple of guys from Walk World, Warren, and I got Michael. You guys, you guys are, are, are you guys just are just put yourselves at the top of the of the of the food chain, right? Because 
there's no, you know, every other game has put out cinematic trailers, has put out yep. trailers that, you know, eh, you know, they're, they're working <laughs> together. Doesn't but live this, up to it. You know, <laughs> this is actually gameplay with true interoperability, with the true enhancements of what they would look like. And so like, to me, like all of a sudden you guys just like, you know, part of the Red Sea and just fucking said, okay, you know what? Like, <laughs> let, me tell, let me show you, how you, let me show you guys how it's really done, right? You know, we had everything ready, like the gameplay, obviously, with shooting and running around and like we had, you know, flying hover cars and things. And I was like, well, why don't we just bring it all together, open world, everything, and just like merge it into like, one experience. We haven't even actually done a optimization pass yet, which is crazy. And it's still running smoothly on like a standard gaming rig of today. This was gameplay. This is all re real time captured. No Ooh. smoke and mirrors anywhere. Let's only... go. Yeah, man. The only <laughs> offline rendering stuff was just the NFT female mint. That it's just the you know what you what you can buy. But other than that, every every frame is real time. We're also uh, spending a lot of time on developing the law behind everything behind walkers. Uh, how did everything happen? Uh, like each trait has a story. Each walker will have a story. So there there will be a purpose to take your hover car and and just plow. Uh, across the uh, the desert right because there might be something you want to visit on the other side or some other law trait uh, or some other thing especially for your character that you want to that you want to visit right so there's that whole aspect as well of, of story that's uh, yeah. that we're pushing hard uh, and it's also worth mentioning too while we're here um wanted to point out that we are focusing very heavily on accessibility for our game we don't want to exploit players we don't want to try and you know pinch them dry for money what we're about is trying to give you know a truly interoperable experience to as many people as possible um obviously there's a lot of you know play to earn gaming mechanics out there that either force you to grind or you know you pay a premium price to you know pay to win basically and that's not what we're about you know we really want to make this uh give value to the player you know respect the player um and give them an experience that's you know enjoyable regardless of the nft mechanics of it shortly after the trailer dropped the walker radio community twitter space lit up and here's some of the highlights of what the members had to say it's going to be really cool to see how we move forward and how all of these different styles of games integrate with each other. And uh, it seems like us as beta testers and early community are gonna be able to really help shape what the future and first launch of games are. Yep, I'm pretty excited about Racing Game 2 and there is a recent partnership. I, I love the Atom, the look and how how they built the, the product, um, which is, we don't know what we get yet, just that there are some track parts and uh, maybe we can build our tracks inside of Walker World. <laughs> this would be, that would be incredible, I think. Yeah, imagine you have your land there and uh, because we know that Walker World will have big and huge lands, coming back to interoperability, you will be able to, with your guild or whatever, like um, maybe Atom has their uh, headquarter there as well and we have one big racing track inside of walker world where we have like weekly races between guilds and maybe we can even drive the cars by ourselves and <laughs> that that is going that is incredible to think about it i really like the gaming aspect of community involved in nfts but like right now what are we doing we're playing smash cards we're playing fall guys we're playing <laughs> like i can't wait till the end of next year you know when we're doing testing parties and hanging out you know i'll dj for everybody while we're running around in walker world beta testing like it's gonna be so cool you know and then when we're in full swing we're gonna be doing our own tournaments in there hosting battle royales and racing games for guild points yeah 100 percent um the thing that got me most about the trailer was the hovercraft like i was that was the most surprising, uh, cool thing that was new to me, you know? I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And also, the Adam Car Club has officially announced their partnership. And in a previous Arcade to Earn Game Talk Show YouTube video, Jeff McDonald leaked a new Adam vehicle, which was a spacecraft. Greatest things about these kind of projects in the ecosystem is how they're working all together. Adam Car Club, Jeffrey McDonald. You know, this is, this is one of the possibilities. We're inspired by all sorts of gaming. We don't need wheels. Looks like a pod racer from uh, Star Wars. Yeah. 
yeah exactly winning these races is the way to progress your career and also the way to enhance your collection don't be surprised to see adam car club flying vehicles appear as part of walker world that's the beauty of co-collaboration and interoperability Project Tempest has also dropped a little update around their recruitment of thingies for the position of world architect. You'll have complete access to all comics that your thingy has helped create. Every artwork your thingy creates, you will receive Asto. Your thingy will have enhanced creative abilities while working in the grand archives. Become the keeper of worlds, first contracted AI artist. And the thingies themselves seem to have new powers, with some of them creating artwork inspired by Salvador Dali. I can't wait to see what gets produced. One final bit of alpha for those of you who have watched to the end, but Tessia the historian, the unofficial lore teller for the Gods and Goblins lore, has started their own Discord, and it's been revealed they'll be dropping an NFT collection in the coming days. I was fortunate enough to interview the team and will be dropping a video on this project shortly, but in the meantime, it might be worthwhile to give Vitessia a follow and to jump into the Discord. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoy this content, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and maybe consider watching one of my other videos. Bunnies up!